what is a digital forensics analyst? So in this video, you're going to learn about the digital forensic analyst role in the cybersecurity world. We'll talk about, like usual, the overview of the job, talk about different job titles you might see out there on job boards, some of the responsibilities, the average salary so you know what to expect money-wise, the tools you might be using, and at just kind of a general level, we're not going to dive into specifics of tools in this video. And then also, do you need college degrees, certifications, all that good stuff? Basically, do you need to spend millions of dollars to get into this, or is this something that you can just train up and go ahead and get the job in? As usual, I'm going to preface this particular video and just say this is not an entry-level role usually. Digital Forensic Analyst is going to be something where you've got some experience at, in a SOC, so working at like Tier 1, Tier 2 SOC level analyst, or you're working as a cybersecurity engineer, or something else where you've kind of been around corporate security, so enterprise-level security, and now you want to move into more of the specific focus on forensics. Some of the most successful people in this role are actually people that have incident response experience, and then they transition to a, a dedicated forensic role. You may also work this role as an incident responder. You'd be doing forensics, but it may not be called digital forensic analyst. So just keep that in mind as you're out there looking at some of the job boards. And we'll talk about job titles in just a moment. But what is a digital forensic analyst? Well, basically, you're the person or you're going to be part of a team that collects and analyzes evidence for an investigation. And when we talk about evidence, we're talking about electronic evidence. So not like that CSI show where they're finding a somebody's thumb or whatever and determining what happened in the crime. Here, you're kind of doing the CSI stuff, but it takes a lot longer and there's a lot more steps involved and you're not usually dealing with somebody's thumb that's cut off their hand, right? You're dealing with electronic data. Um, and we're talking about different cyber crimes or incidents. So this could be, you could be doing things that are just like insider threat or accidental disclosures. And it's not always that super sexy, oh, the hackers got us type of thing. So just keep that in mind as well, that, that it's not always the sexiest stuff. And there are some challenges in this role. There are some things that we won't dive into too much in this video, but there are some things that you may not want to see. Um, you know, CSAM, child sexual abuse material. There's uh, typically with incident response as well, a lot of the malware will will have a lot of porn involved. So if you're not, if you're kind of not really into that type of world or you're not comfortable with that type of world, then you may not want to see those images. And guess what? This role, you're going to see that stuff usually. So um, it, it just kind of depends. And depending on where you work at also, it could be a danger to your physical safety as well as the safety of your loved ones. Um, and mostly that's if you're working kind of in the government space or law enforcement space. And if that does occur, then you'll be trained on ways to help mitigate those types of issues. But for the general person watching this video, the biggest thing you're going to have to just keep in mind is that it can be taxing on your mental health because of general porn as well as CSAM images that you might see. There's a concept called chain of custody in forensics. And so as part of the overview, I just want to cover that real quick. Essentially, that just means that we can track that evidence from the time we collected it all the way through the time it's there at, at the trial or at the end of the investigation. Because if it's not a criminal case or, or a civil case going to the trial, then you know maybe it's just internal, so it's not going to a trial. So we're not going to like testify in an actual courtroom with the evidence, but we will, you will be testifying to maybe your leadership team or testifying to HR or the corporate legal counsel or someone like that, because maybe they need to fire the person. So anytime you collect that evidence, analyze it, at some point there's some kind of a, a reporting or testifying, but it's not always actually in a courtroom. And that chain of custody is just, again, taking us from the starting point of the evidence all the way through to we're actually delivering that to, to the final party, if you will. Um, think of it this way. If I had a a cookie company, right? So I have a bakery. I have a bakery. And we make the most delicious cookies in the world. Whatever, cook, whatever cookie you like, we make it. So we need to make sure that from the point of when we put the cookies in the oven, all or when they come out of the oven, all the way through the the delivery, we need to make sure that our customer gets all the cookies, right? You, you don't want to be missing cookies. So we want to make sure we have all the cookies for you. So we would put a process in place. And we in this case, we call it our chain of custody, where we have one one employee takes the cookies out of the oven and puts them in a bag and then seals the bag. And then they sign a checklist and sign off to another employee that picks up that bag and then walks it to the delivery 
company. Let's say let's say we use a third party for delivery. So now they sign off like, hey, we delivered the cookies to the delivery company. Then the delivery company takes that the cookies, they scan it in, and they say, okay, cool. And so now there's a, a record of those cookies. And so when the delivery company delivers the cookies, they also scan and have you sign something saying you received the cookies. So now we have a paper trail essentially, or an electronic trail of the cookies going from the oven to the bag at the bakery, to the worker at the bakery that the bakery that takes the cookies to the third party delivery service. We then have that trail also from the delivery service to you. So we have an entire trail or quote unquote chain of custody of those cookies all the way through to the end. And that's all the chain of custody is. It's not as yummy as cookies because chain of custody, you're dealing with electronic evidence. It's just not as cool as cookies, but it's the same philosophy, right? We want to make sure that the end user or the end organization or person or whomever is able to get the evidence that they need. So what about some job titles when you're looking out there? Typically, you're going to see digital forensic analysts or digi digital forensics analysts. It might be plural. Um, you might see it that way, and that's probably the vast majority of cases, but sometimes you'll see computer forensic investigator, or digital forensic examiner, um, e-discovery is, is another popular area, and then also cybercrime investigator, but that's typically if you're working for a law enforcement agency. So um, like usual, below this video in the description, I'll put a listing of some different job titles so you can go search around on social media. And job responsibilities, as I mentioned, you're going to be collecting, preserving, securing that electronic evidence, as we talked about already, right, the chain of custody, if you remember the cookie example we just talked about. You're going to analyze that evidence, um, and essentially, you're, you're also going to try to identify uh, potential sources of evidence as part of that collection. So the more you get experience, you'll kind of learn, like, where, where do the bad guys hide things or try to hide things, and that allows you to see where things might be, because... As much as we would love to make what, what's called a bit-by-bit -bit copy of an image at a site and look through every little thing, the reality is in a lot of these investigations, you're, you've got hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pieces of evidence that you, or potential pieces of evidence, and you just don't have the time to look through all that realistically. So that's why we focus on areas where we think the, the bad person might be hiding some things so we can try to get most of that evidence and build a case against them, whether that's, a, again, a criminal or civil case. You'll be involved in investigations as part of this job. And again, those could be civil, criminal. Those could also just be um, from your employer, right? It could be disciplinary type of things or what we call administrative types of investigations where you might just be having to fire someone. All that stuff you're doing, you're going to be de dealing with a lot of reports, especially around chain of custody. Um, all that's going to be reported off. And then, as I mentioned, you may need to testify in court, whether that's, again, civil or criminal, but also at, for administrative, you, you're typically going to be reporting or quote unquote testifying to whatever your findings were. And then in some organizations, in some instances, you may also be involved in building your own custom forensic tools, but that's pretty rare. Uh, typically, most places are using out of the box well-known, well-vetted tools because that allows them to get the convictions. Because if, you're just, if you just make up your own tool and you collect the evidence with that, the bad guy could actually get off on a technicality because your tool is not actually vetted. So it sounds like a lot of work. What are you going to make? Well, on the extremely low end, around 75000 base, but that's typically for law enforcement. And usually there's other perks like, you know, being able to arrest people and things like that. But there's other perks around that type of role, like bonuses and things. Um, usually for this role, since it does require experience, you're probably looking closer to low six figures starting out and then all the way up to 125,000. But honestly, I, I know people that are making close to 200,000 in this role. So it, it really just kind of depends quite a bit on experience and all that good stuff. In the UK, around 30 to 60,000 pounds. Then in India, around 300,000 to 1.5 million Indian rupees. So... Some of the tools you're going to be using, again, we're not going to dive into like tool specific or specific companies or anything, but forensic imaging tools. So essentially that just allows you to create a copy of whatever you found. So the dig digital storage and allows you to create what's called that bit for bit copy. So basically that helps preserve the actual integrity of the evidence. Forensic analysis software is another thing you'll be using. And, and by the way, a lot of the tools have these different capabilities built in. So you might be just using a couple of tools usually that have all these capabilities built into them. Traffic analysis tools. So for uh, like network traffic analysis to try to identify any anomalies or suspicious activity. Password recovery decryption tools. So let's say you, you grab uh, a laptop 
from the suspect and you can't open it because they have a pa is password protected. So there's tools out there that'll let you crack the password or bypass it to get into that laptop. Decryption tools, same thing here. If they're encrypting their files, potentially you can decrypt those and be able to see what's actually in those. Mobile forensic tools, so just focused on mobile forensics, honestly, you know, smartphones, tablets, et cetera. Uh, and then file analysis tools, uh, again, capabilities are usually built into the main tools for this type of stuff, but just analyzing different file formats and identifying potential sources of evidence. And then of course, mal different malware analysis tools, uh, tools like data visualization tools. Uh, like I said, though, a lot of these are just built into um, the different uh, tools out there, like NCASE, for example. So what about college degree certs, all that good stuff? What kind of education do you need for this? Well, there are like there are some um, master's degrees for forensics here in the U.S. If you have the money, those things are fine to get. But if you're entry level, if you're career changing, it's just a waste of your money, honestly, because you're not going to you're not likely to get a job fresh out of a master's degree. You typically need the actual hands on experience. So. For my recommendation would be get hands-on experience as like a SOC analyst. So you'd be starting to work in incident response as part of that. And then also you can look at like cybersecurity engineering or something like that to get experience. But some certs, if you do work in this role and you want to get certs, some common ones are the Certified Forensic Computer Examiner or CSCE, the Certified Computer Examiner or CCE, the NCASE, and that's one of the security, to the uh, investigative tools you can use, the NCASE Certified Examiner. The Certified Digital Forensics Examiner is a CDFE. The CHFI is a Certified Hacking Forensic Investigator, or sometimes called the Computer Hacking Forensic Investigator. Um, that's a knowledge-based cert, so I don't typically recommend that one, but some college degrees require you to take that. Then also GAIAC or SANS has a Certified Forensic Examiner one as well, the GCFE. So a lot of different certs out there. Most of them are pretty expensive if you're, if you're on a budget, so I don't recommend you get those. But as you grow your career in this role, you can definitely take a look at some of those, and some companies will require them for promotions and things like that. So as usual, if you like these videos, subscribe to the channel, post any questions you have around your career in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.